To download and install KDB, first go to the kx.com website. At the top of the page, there's a menu option for software. Go to it and then click on trial version. Once the page loads, you'll be presented with the download now button. Click it. You'll then be shown the license agreement. Read the license agreement, scroll to the bottom and click I agree. You'll now be shown a list of downloads for the various operating systems that KDB can be ran on. So we click the zip file to download the Windows version. Once we open the zip file, you'll find that it contains one folder, a Q folder. We want to take that Q folder and place it in our C drive. Now I either go to the Windows Start menu, Run option, or I press the Windows R key combination to bring up the wrong console, and I type in CMD to, to bring me a command console. Once I have the command console, I change to the Q directory, and I specify the Win32 folder QEXE to start KDB. We can now enter commands and run them at the Q console. Now that we can launch KTB, let's see what we can do with it. Once we start KDB, we're immediately presented with a Q prompt. The Q prompt is an interactive read a file print loop. Anything we type in is immediately evaluated and its answer returned. If I did 10 plus 3, it's evaluated to 13. Similarly with other mathematical expressions. Division in KDB is actually the percentage symbol, so 90 divided by 20, 4.5. So you can see we get instant feedback, and this is going to really help us learn KDB quickly. If I wanted to see of some a value to a variable, I could simply do the variable name, a, colon, and then the value that I want to store in that variable. So here I'll store the value 13. And now if I enter A at the command line, 13 is returned. If I wanted to save an expression, the result of an expression, I could do B colon 10 times 9. And that would save the value 90. So the colon takes the expression on the right, evaluates it, and stores that value into the variable name on the left hand side. I can then reuse these variables, so I could do a plus b, which was 13 plus 90 to give 103, and I could save the result of that to a third variable c, which would return 103. If we wanted to place a comment into our code, one format that KDB supports is at the end of a line. To show that it's a comment, we must first have a single space followed by a forward slash. So if I had the statement 2 plus 3, and I wanted to place a comment after that, I could do space forward slash comment. And anything after the forward slash is ignored. However, what I must be careful of is that there must be a space before that forward slash. Otherwise, that's an error. It's not returning the result. We'll consider some of the different formats of comments there. If you tried entering a command with more than two operations into the console, you may have got an unexpected result. For example, the statement 100 times 10 plus 10, most people would expect the result 1010 but we get the result 2000. This is because the normal mathematical rules of precedence for most program languages are not used within KDB. KDB evaluates all expressions from right to left. So normally with mathematical rules, what would occur is the multiplication first 
which would give us 1000 and then the addition to give us 1010. Instead what's happening within KDB is you start on the right so it does 10 plus 10 gives us 20 and then multiplies by 100 they give us 2000. The reason commonly given for this behaviour is it is much simpler to understand. Many experienced Q programmers would agree. Many beginners, however, find it quite confusing. One method of forcing the multiplication to happen first is to surround that operation with parentheses and that will give us the answer 1010. However, experienced KDB programmers will usually rewrite the statement to change the order to get the desired result. One of the most useful commands when starting to explore the queue environment will be the system or slash commands. For example, I could run the system the system fee command to return a list of all variables that exist within KDB. I could also have ran the same command by using the backslash v. Similar commands in this family include slash a to list the tables, slash b to list the views that exist, and slash f to list the functions that exist. All these are built-in system commands. Usually these will involve a single layer. I can however also run longer commands. I could do slash cd. Because this isn't a built-in KDB command, instead the string here cd is taken and ran as if it was entered at the underlying operating system prompt. Because I'm in Windows, this will run the Windows cd command which gives my current directory as a queue folder. I could call any DOS command that I want it. One of the most popular system commands is the systeml command for loading a queue script from file. If I go to my current directory that queue is running within, which is the C drive queue folder, I'm going to create a new script. So to make it easier myself, I'll copy the trade script, rename it to hello, and I'll open it in a text editor. Any text editor will do. So here I've opened it in queue studio. I'll delete the existing code now, if I want to write commands within a script, I can simply do similar to what we entered at the console. I could do num colon 101 to store the value 101 in the variable num. I could then do 800 plus num. So I've, I've taken a new line and the semicolon breaks between statements. So 800 plus 101 and if I wanted to, to print that value out to the console, I could do show. I'll do another semicolon. And the last command, I'll do show hello world. Save my file. Now if I go back to my Q prompt, and I enter the command system l hello.q we can see it's printed out the two variables I asked it to and if I look at the num variable it's defined as 101 I could have run the same file using slash l hello.q finally if I want to exit I can do slash slash or the exit command The video you just watched is one small part of our fully online KDB training course. On timestore.com you can log into 
our online training course. As part of our online training course, we provide over 20 modules on various topics that progress in difficulty from introductory modules on setting up KDB, the data types available, lists, up to inter-process communication and how data is stored on disk. Most modules will have a demonstration video, a related exercise and example solutions. Users watch the video, submit their exercises and receive feedback from KDB experts. Many people have successfully used our online course to learn KDB to an advanced level on their own time. As well as the online training, we also provide in-person public training courses and on-site training. Our public training courses are available regularly in London, New York and other major cities. Our on-site training is available when you want it, delivered at your offices and we can customise the course to the modules that you require. The three-day courses are typically either an introduction to KDB course, or an advanced data manipulation course, or a KDB architecture course. More details on each of these can be found in the website. If you're interested or have any questions, or want to register for a course, you can register on the website or click the contact us button at the top of the page and simply send us a message. Alternatively, you can email training at timestore.com. Thanks for watching.